chance. You're not helping their production by sapping all their money out because you want to get paid. I mean, I, we've we've got people right now we're talking to, and we're going to be able to pay a few people on the next film with very few. And we've got already talked to the guy who spent over a million dollars setting shit on fire in Starship Troopers. He's worked with Roman Polanski. He was the head of uh, special effects on the craft. He's going to work for us for free. So I kind of have a problem when I call up other local special effects people who want to work for us, with us, with this guy, and they go, I want $1,000. But that guy's not our name, though. Somebody else. Yeah, but what is it? What is it worth? What is it worth? To, what does it look like on your resume when you go? I did special effects for an independent film that nobody's seen, that had nobody important involved, but I got paid for it. And what does it look like when you go? I worked with this guy, Mr. Ray, whose credentials go on and on and on. I mean, if you can't see the value in that, I don't know what to do for you. You know, what I mean, we went to Action Fest, and some of the people we've met there and talked to are beyond the top of their game. They're jumping into crash bags, but they're the only one like it in the world. And it's brand new. It's a whole new design. It's the safest crash bag in the world. And they don't make them for other people, and they don't talk to other people about it. They're going to sell our guys one. They're going to sell Billy one of them. Billy's going to put together a stunt team here on the East Coast of different people who want to get involved. They're going to go from doing 25, 30-foot jumps to 60, 80, or more. Yep. That changes your film. I mean, that changes Wait. what you're doing. Wait a minute. Even the heights of, like, that, like the jump done in Goldeneye at those, the beginning? Those, <laughs> that new bag, um, they only have built a, it was like a 10 by 10 or a 20 by 20, so that only takes you up to 120 feet. Mm. This new bag, though, every time you increase the dimensions... Your height, well, all bags work that way. But the difference is the guy who invented this bag has been doing this forever, and his friend had been doing it forever. And he was <coughs> saying to his friend, You realize you're using the same bags that they started using back in the 60s? Like, don't you think we should think about this? People die, they get hurt. Maybe we can adjust the bag. Guy refused, jumped a 25, or it was 30 feet, it was what they consider a very small jump, hit his bag, bounced off his bag, went head first into a rail, died instantly. So John Can sat down and spent five years designing this new bag. The whole point of the bag is no matter where you hit in the bag, the air comes out of the center of the bag, so your body will roll towards the center. There is no bounce involved at all. And when Billy jumped into it doing his flip at Action Fest, he literally he said the same thing John did. The first time you land in this bag, you're sure you're dead. Because it's the <laughs> softest landing on earth, and you're just not used to it. Stuntmen are used to feeling it when they hit a pad, and like it hurts, apparently. I mean, they can shake it off, but you're going to just stiff the next day, and your muscles are going to get all tight. He landed in this thing, and it was like, he got up, and he was like, Oh my God, let's do it again! You know, and Billy's been jumping on a mattress, basically, you know, for years. They use that, if, you, if those of you were on set when he was jumping, that thing is the size of like a twin, or a double twin, or something, bed. It's foam about this thick, and it hurts when you land on it. And his leg missed the first time he did it. So that's 2300 bucks, 2500 bucks to get Billy this bag. And that means we can pull all these other stuff people together, and they can start doing stuff for free for other people. So if we put a thing up on Kickstarter or something to try to raise this money, do I think we'll raise it right now? No. Because we did Indiegogo, we did Kickstarter. I talk to people constantly that do that stuff, and the, the fail rate's pretty high. And it just seems like people aren't interested. They don't see the value in investing in the future. They only want to invest in one film. So that's kind of what we're saying to everybody. Please, God, start talking to people and just sort of change how you're talking. Don't talk in terms of we should get you know you should get involved in this one project. Say stop hiding, get involved. Stop. Don't call yourself. You know, I will, oh, I'm a real independent filmmaker if all you're going to do is keep shooting stuff in your backyard. You know what I mean? And I'm not, like, trying to give anybody shit. I actually don't want to think any of you are those kinds of people. But, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. There's an effort. There's, I, it, again, I'm going to start to get redundant, but I keep hearing, like, let's start a new project. Let's start a new project. Why? There are plenty of projects. You know what I mean? If you aren't ready to spend the next two years producing your, your new idea, your new project, why waste your time with it? Man, jump on board and get into one of these other projects and help them out, get that film out, make that film that much better, and get on to the next one. Because if we can put out six or seven movies in a year or two, and they're all quality, 
doesn't matter. It does not matter if you have a name in it. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter if you're Warner Brothers. It doesn't matter if you're Paramount. There are plenty of distribution companies who will jump all over you. Because they get tired of having to call up somebody every time they look at a film. They want to go to one company that goes, don't worry about buying one film from us. We'll give you one every six months. That means they don't have to look anymore. That just saved them a shit ton of money. It costs a lot of money to go around looking for films. So that's part of what we're trying to do. So we're looking for people who want to jump on anything, and not just on one film either. Please help us with this research. Please help us run down the distribution. Please help us run down names, people who are interested in helping independent film. Because there are a lot of them out there. And you'd be surprised how many people jump on as soon as you talk to them. So I have a question. Um, I've been thinking more and more I would love to do some more acting. Where do I start? How do I find the projects? I'm in talk that Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk, well, talk to the people who are running around talking to people. You know what I mean? Um, and I know that sounds kind of weird, but I, I, I Where do I find the people that are... Around. Groups Definitely. like this, Craigslist, Craigslist, you know, getting on oh, all of the uh, update lists, the email lists. Every time I hear someone go, well, we have an update list or group thing, and, you know, I boom, I sign up for it. I get stuff that, like, I, I, I have no idea how I got on the list anymore. I really don't. Which is funny, because my experience was <coughs> completely the opposite of yours. I was sort of expecting what you had or, or just, like, no interest or just like complete losers and all I did was put on a Craigslist ass uh, ass <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> Craig's got a nice ass on the <laughs> uh, put on a Craig, Craigslist ad and um, and got like you know hundreds of responses and then like had interviews with for like two months and it was crazy and not one person I mean you know it was very easy to weed out all the people who have no real interest, but um, but not once did anyone ever say, "Oh, this is for like." I made it very clear: There's no pay whatsoever. You'll get lunch, and uh, and everyone was like, "No, I just want to see this finished, or I want to get some experience, or I've never operated a boom mic before, and I'm going to do that." So I guess I really went out. We had a lot of luck on the inside of Craigslist, and actually was saving me a shit ton of time because we have a casting director that does it for free. So she went ahead and weeded out the ridiculous amount of emails we got, where even though it said no pay, people will email you going, how much does this pay? Right. Well, you can't read, so I'm not sure I want you on the staff. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did you know, auditions, and we had people come in that we thought were really excited, and some of them would break out, some of them did it, a bunch of them did it. Billy Wilde showed up to our auditions. That's how we met. Oh, you had no idea. We had no clue who he was. He just walked in and said, well, I thought I saw it said stunt guys or something. I just want to help out. I'm sure you guys know what you're doing. I mean, I only have 10 years at MGM as Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones stuff. You guys are doing like 15 stunts every 12 seconds for you know, 10 times a day. But I'm sure you guys know more about it. I just want to help out. And you found him through Craigslist. John Rutland, also. <laughs> John Rutland came in just because he saw a thing on Craigslist. He's got an agent. This guy works. John works. Um, and that he did all this stuff because I interviewed him also. Rutland's hilarious. He's kind of crazy. Yeah. He's hilarious. He is his own little local star. Yeah. I love that you go into the Mediterranean and places like that, and you'll see his picture in a frame behind there, and it's a <laughs> sun. <laughs> Like, All right, John. I think that's what made me shy away from. I him. think he passes those out, maybe. <laughs> 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 I wonder if he like open his trunk. Does he have a box of those being made? You know? Yeah, Jack, you should do that. With the frame. What? The frame with the yeah. name? Yeah, right. You should do that. <laughs> Jack Egan, you never heard of me. Um, I got a couple things to say. It hit me. Um, first is uh, the idea of an independent film co-op is good. I think it's solid. Uh, it's not. Uh, regional base, so that that's <coughs> and I think that's what you're going to sell people on the idea that that's the central place where people give and take. Mm -hmm. Because when you're not paying people, you're sort of beholden to their uh, schedules, you know, and, right? And so they can flake out, and they don't feel like they're losing anything <coughs> because they're not getting paid. Right. Um, but if there's a stake, you know, if they see 
concretely, you know, what they might get out of it, even if it's not money, mm -hmm. then there's more of a, um, uh, an investment. And I think so you may be drawing the catalog, and if you are work excellent actual person who shows up, you get like a check by your name? Yeah, I mean, maybe a point system after you've done X amount of projects, you earn enough points that the co-op has to assist you That's in kind of a project or something. Yeah. The other thing, guys, is we're talking to people not about raising money for one movie. Um, there are people in this town, believe it or not, who've spent four or five million dollars on a movie, and it sits in their bedroom in a can. And they do it again. Like no one's seen it? And why? Because nobody wanted to buy it. No. And they have the money to spend. So, our so if you've already done it, then why would you <laughs> yeah. distribute it through the free digital media just to get generate some Because products? you're the guy that thought it was worthwhile to still do on film stocks. You don't, don't have, have a digital those, version. Yeah. you got a film stock version sitting in your bedroom. Yeah. And guess what? It, it ain't cheap. I was thinking that you meant the cam was a... I mean literally film stock in the can in the old traditional sense. Right. And, um, but so if they're only spend that much, they can spend some more to convert it. Well, well, they, you, well, it didn't work, so why spend the money? Let's do a new one. I'll spend four million on a new one, make the money back on the There's other one. There's all sorts so, of stuff. I mean, it's people say that shit to me, and I'm like, huh, okay. yeah. So our goal is to convince these people that we have enough people behind us yeah. that it would be worthwhile to give us that money to build a studio. To say we're going to create a studio and we're not going to waste money buying some huge space and we don't need it. You know, maybe in LA that was really important. You guess why? I don't think that's important here. Why would you build a huge studio unless you really, really, really need it for whatever you're doing? We have so many amazing locations here in this town. There's so many buildings all over the Orange District. They're huge and empty. You can rent for that one month that you needed that big space. Our goal is to promise X amount of films. We're not going to take your money and set up a studio and shoot one movie. We're going to set up an in, a business plan, an infrastructure, do it right. We've got five years paid for, and everybody who works for this company is an employee and an owner. We did our LLC recently, our business plan and everything like that. Our whole plan started being based on different uh, studios and different films, and we're writing a new business plan as a pitch to these people for a studio. We're basing it on the Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest, because these people are some of the end Ealing studios out of England. Because these are some of these most successful film companies, and if you don't even know who they are, you've watched a bunch of their films. And Shaw Brothers was the first, I think they're the very first. They built a studio with their sets and apartments and a hospital and a school. It was all in their studio. And if you worked for them, if you were the guy taking trash out on the set, you owned part of the studio. So if the studio made money, you made money. You were guaranteed work. You were guaranteed a paycheck. You were put on a salary. You're not, yeah, you're on a salary. You're not getting hourly, so you're going to bust your butt. But you're getting paid to do what you love, and you don't have to scramble from month to month to find the next project. And that's what we're going for. That's our plan. We're not going to build up a hospital and other shit, but we want everyone to own the studio so they understand that if they're taking out trash and they're working boom, that helping these films be successful by putting in your extra bit of effort and your heart and your soul is profitable to you. It is good for your family. It means that you guys keep getting to work and that you don't have to worry about finding the next job and yada, yada, yada. And these are like the most profitable company. Even Studios did The Lady Killers, which is still considered like one of the greatest comedies ever done, ever, period. And Even Studios was like, yes, hey, they were freaking tiny for nobody's. They did some of the best comedies, period. And their whole policy was, if you work for us, you're part of us. We're a family. We're going to make sure you don't have to go to some other studio to look for your job next month. We own you. It, it sucks, because people hear it like, we own you. You know, and like, oh, you're our property. But it's it's a two-way street. Yeah, they own you, and you sign a salary contract with, like you would with any other job, and so you can technically get taken advantage of and end up having to work five times what you're actually getting paid. But if you don't show up to work, their films fail, and none of them make money either. So you end up being really willing to keep coming to work and keep putting in that effort because you see those movies start to make money, and then suddenly your paycheck gets a little bigger, and suddenly you start getting more portions. It's like stocks being given out. You know, ownership of the company to the employees. And there's no way that kind of thing is ever going to happen 
if we just keep sitting around for someone to make glass of the Mohicans.